and these are past audit adjustments, which basically means we come across them during the audit and we have materiality thresholds that determine you know, if something is required to be posted or if it's not. Um, and this is below our materiality thresholds. And basically, we go to management and say, hey, this is a, you know, an item uh, that we found in the audit. Uh, it's not material, so it doesn't need to be posted. Um, and <coughs> we're communicating this right now. So this first one was for uh, GASB 87 leases, which was implemented last year. Um, and it was still, it was uh, immaterial last year, it was immaterial this year, so uh, it is a past adjustment. And then on the next page, um, that we had a past adjustment as well with the Savitas for the GASB 96 accounting standard that was implemented. And if you look at the amounts, you know, um, asset of 166000 and an asset of 40000 for the Savitas, you know, that's a big number to you and I. But for the district that has total assets of $76 million, it's not really, it's not going to change the, the impact that the user has looking at the financial statement. So that's the reason that they passed on. The GASB 96 statement, uh, there's a footnote in uh, the financial statements that describes that it was implemented in 2023 and that there was no material impact. So there is transparency there as well. Uh, next, I have a couple slides on financial statement information, starting off with the statement of net position um, trends district-wide. Uh, you can see that uh, assets, deferred outflows, and liabilities and deferred inflows were pretty consistent for a couple of years, and then in 2023, there was a bond issue, 2023 bond issue of $25 million that increased both side assets and liabilities. Um, there's also some construction going on in 2023 that increased assets, um, and there are also increases in the pension and OPEB liabilities that the district is required to uh, report on their books. And that position increased with revenues exceeding expenditures, which we can see on the next page, um, district-wide. And again, that blue line is revenues, orange is expenses, so consistently revenues exceeding expenditures. Um, a bit of an increase in 2023 compared to 22 due to, um, mainly due to increased state and federal sources. Um, and as you know, you know, the general fund, you get state funding, and then the uh, fund two special revenue, that's where you get all the grants on the federal funds. And those, as you're expanding them, you're receiving the funds um, <clears throat> once you report to the state. So uh, that whenever there's a rise in expenditures, there's typically a rise in uh, revenues as well. Then on my last page here, we have revenues over expenses for food service. Uh, just some, some trends for the past couple years again. The revenues did dip down below the expenditures in uh, 23. There was a, a little bit of a decrease in the federal revenues related to food service. However, the lunchroom sales were up, uh, so that, that did offset it a little bit. And the um, uh, expenses increased a little bit due to increases in salaries and benefits. And that is all I had for presentation. I'd be happy to entertain any questions if there are any. Thank you. I think excellent job overall. Excellent job, Kevin, as well, as, as always, like going through this. I know this is one of the most fun times of the year, for sure. Love it. <laughs> but uh, thank you. I think it's it's great. Um, I think it's pretty consistent from year to year that you know, we're always in a very good position. I don't know if other folks have questions. No questions other than to, to mimic that same thing. It's, uh, this is a, a huge thing. So for you and your team, everybody involved, excellent job. Well, team's good. I, I wouldn't touch on that last slide. The expenses going over revenues, uh, food service is uh, a bit by design. Uh, we have, quote, too much money according to the state uh, uh, food service audits that we're trying to spend some of that down. Um, and the volatility you see there since 2020 is kind of out of our hands to an extent. Uh, but you'll start to see uh, some of those numbers after 24 start to move back down a little bit. So. 
Thank you. Great. Thank you. It's okay. I'd like to excuse a name so he doesn't have to sit. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. You're, 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 you're welcome. welcome. Yeah. Citizens, and there were none. Uh, following that, we have the principal's reports. And um, given that we've got a pretty stacked agenda tonight with a lot of meaty topics and there may be discussion, um, I would offer that there's no need to come up and present to us um, unless you have something specifically you want to highlight to the board, unless someone else on the board has a specific question. So if, if anyone has anything specifically they, they need to highlight or want to highlight, that, that's great, uh, but, but no need to. Okay. All right. Um, moving into item D, the attendance and enrollment report. And I think also you guys Same. If you guys need to leave or you'd like to leave, feel free as well. If there's, if there's something you want to learn about, for sure, absolutely stay, but don't feel obligated. I just knew, you know, new style from the airport. No one's going to take advantage. No one's making a great point. Their friends are different. Dr. Baker, is it okay? Can you speak out? I don't have any objections. We had a, an interesting day today, so I'm sure we have a lot of tired people in the audience. And there's probably people getting up early in the morning to drive uh, several hours away for some basketball games as well. So. Go ahead, Bob. I'm sorry. All right, no problem. Um, let's see. <coughs> for, we're already at, uh, we're already officially past month five, so that's uh, kind of a sign of that spring is right around the corner, I guess. Um, we are up a few kids, um, thanks to preschool, and um, it looks like we have uh, a little bit of a bump in middle school as well. So um, we're up a few students there. Our attendance percentages were all above 90 again, so actually above 93 again. So our, you guys probably can't see this, but our attendance winner. Getting the trophies back is the middle school at 94.96%. So, good job to all of our schools uh, for managing that day in and day out. I will say uh, each year we get to uh, we get to subtract or basically not count five of our lowest attendance days, and today was one of those. It's going to be one of those days. So between the fog and the rain and all of the drama from early this morning, which probably heard about and the basketball game uh, we were we were down into the mid eighties which we usually don't touch that and our high school is actually in the high seventies so, <laughs> so but that's okay we, we do get to excuse uh, five of those low attendances but overall I'm pretty pleased with that and if you might have any questions about this particular report on our way to month six. Thank you. Margaret, do you have anything you would like to add about the district wellness report or Rob? Sorry, I, I um, didn't realize that was next. Um, we, what we typically kind of do is um, you can you can see well, I'll come back up. <laughs> Never miss a chance to be on the camera. I threw the whole shit off my I'll give you the I'll give you a quick overview and then if the principal or Margaret would like to chime in, they were kind of the expert of their area of, of the process. So um, this this report um, stems from a, a KRS, and I, forgive me, I don't have that memorized or written down here, but um, by January 31st, we have to hold a public forum, so this is a public forum, to uh, kind of run through our uh, 
health and wellness plan uh, for the upcoming year. 60 days prior to, to this form that we're doing right now, we have to have it posted to our website. So back that on up. That's when the, the work on this has to begin. So we're we're really doing this kind of in the months of October or in November. Um, so uh, we have a little team in each school, and then Margaret uh, also has a team uh, of folks from food service that all get together. We uh, discuss some of the um, points on our, on our assessment here, and we decide whether or not it is fully in place, partially in place, or not in place at all. And um, I think, I've said this in the past, but how this usually goes is we always use the same assessment. It's called the Healthier uh, Generation Alliance Assessment. Most schools, I think, use this one. But the questions are pretty much always the same. Uh, so therefore, our answers usually don't change a whole lot. And so we, uh, I guess, for lack of a better word, we kind of have to nitpick ourselves to find something to improve upon. So that's where we get um, some of our improvement areas. I think for the most part, we, uh, we feel like most, most of these uh, bullet points are, are pretty well in place, um, if not fully in place. So there's, there's a few there um, that have the word to work on, or it might say, uh, it might say the word goal. Next to it. Um, you keep scrolling down here. You might see one that's the name slightly different. Uh, this, this year's goal. So if it says to work on or this year's goal, those would be some items that the school has chosen that they would like to uh, develop some sort of a uh, kind of a little mini improvement plan to address that topic and then hopefully next year you can uh, raise yourself a little bit higher. And at the end of the day, all of this gets um, submitted to KDE and, uh, in May, and um, to date, we've all just done a good job. We'll see you next year. So that's kind of how it goes. Um, so at this point, I'll step down. If you have any questions about what the uh, improvement goals are for each school, feel free to ask. It, uh, each, each slide is a, uh, a different school. Okay, we get uh, four, four, three different documents, one for LSC, one for middle, and one for high. And I told each school, pick, pick an item. If they picked more than one, that was a very issue. I have a question. So the only question I have was, um, I remember we talked about this last year, was the uh, use of physical activity as a punishment. Yes. Um, and it looks like it's done away with in all the schools except for the high school, and the high school system is like partially or in progress or something like that. I didn't know if there's a reason for that or... Uh, is that one marked? Not I don't think it's marked. It's on there. Mark. It's marked. That's one I would have to talk to Mr. Coleman about. And it, and it may have to do with the fact that they don't really have recess uh, or like a, you know, like kind of like the middle school and elementary do. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you that, said that partially could, in place. I just didn't know what that could have been, what that was about. Or it could have, it might have been a typo that nobody caught. I don't know. But we'll, we'll follow up on that. Okay. Thing. Yeah, for sure. Good question. Next time on the agenda, the construction report. I don't know if everybody has a chance to, to look at that. If we have anybody have specific
appreciating the detail every, uh, on everything there, like the window topic. I know we talked about it last month, so it was, it was interesting to see that that's on there again and to correct, but let me talk about it last month. Uh, superintendent non work days, did everyone have a chance to look at those? Personnel, Does everyone had a chance to look at that. And then for other, I don't have anything for other do have. I, uh, I do have just a few. As everyone I think is aware, we, we had some things circulating on social media in regard in relation to the tragic events that occurred in Covington. We do have some students at Walton Verona that either once attended Covington or no kids who attend Covington due to social media. There's lots of lots of connections. Uh, so I think that's part of the reason some of these things occurred. There were other districts in North Kentucky that, that were affected. Uh, I want to stress that we have no reason to believe that there are any credible threats to any of our schools or our students. Uh, just want to thank uh, Eric, and Rob, Adam. We, we had several people working on this from a very early, it was very early in the morning. Um, they did a fantastic job. Our SRO Joe Gregory was involved and just appreciate uh, everyone's efforts. Uh, so that we can assure the community that, that we continue to offer a safe environment for, for our staff and our kids. Um, I think everyone's aware, uh, both boys and girls basketball teams are at the All-A, they're doing well. Um, it's really nice to see all our kids down there and how well they represent our, our school and our district. Um, the, the girls play Nicholas County tomorrow at 10 a.m. and the boys play Lyon County tomorrow evening at 6.30, number 119 in the state, so that, that'll be a good challenge. Um, I think there's already been some dialogue about KSBA that's coming up uh, at the beginning of March, uh, and Rob touched briefly on some attendance issues. There was some discussion yesterday among superintendents, it appears that the flu is starting to rear its ugly head. Uh, there was a, another independent district in the area that was at 82% district wide yesterday, so Hopefully our attendance makes a quick rebound that we all lay this week, but just that's something to keep our eye on. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, it is Board Appreciation Month. Uh, just have, each board member just has a small token of our thanks, and just I would like to say that as a group, I feel that the six of us, uh, our most important role is to set direction in this district and to, to provide clarity about where we're going and what we're about. And I am incredibly excited about our work around the learner. Michelle and I, and some other folks in the district, have started that work, and you'll get an update on that work in the very near future. Um, terribly excited about setting a direction for our district. I feel like we do a really good job of just having school every day, but we need direction. Um, we can't be just a, a shift floating around, you know, at sea. We need direction, and, and that's what this work is going to provide. So I look forward to providing the board with that update and engaging in those conversations. Uh, with the board. So, very excited about that and I appreciate the board's commitment uh, to work together in, in, a, in a collaborative fashion to set direction for our district. So, thank you all for what you do. Anyone else have anything for other? Uh, you did remind me of something, so just talking about the KSBA meeting that's coming up. Um, at our last meeting, Jimmy or Aubrey, one of you had mentioned having a team dinner. Um, so just if folks can think about that now that we've got a decent amount of time between now and March. I think we're planning for Friday, if, if everybody's there. So once once everybody has a chance to read their email and um, figure out the we're going to be there, and let's just plan to align on at least one day that we can do it in there. All right, moving into item three, recommended board motion. First item would be item A, approval of the minutes for January 4th, 2024. I need a motion for that. I make it. First by Heather. Any discussion? Second. Second. Jamie, all in favor? Motion passes. Five Item B, approval of the superintendent's expense report. I make it. First by Heather. Any discussion? Thank you. Second. I'll make it. Senator Aubrey, all in favor? Motion passes by the uh, Item C, approval of the treasurer's report. I'll make it. First by Heather. Any 
questions or discussion? Okay. We have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Passes by the way. Item D, approval of the order of the measures. It's always great, I mean, just a testament to the level of detail you give us every month on this, so I think that continues to be great. Yeah, and the time frame in which you, you give it, I appreciate that. For the time, it, it's a lot to, to look, a lot for you to put together, it's a lot for us to look at, so to have a few days to look over that and you make it really easy for... Not an exciting review. <laughs> yeah, I know. Up 
with inflation. That's a cost of living adjustment, essentially. Uh, and uh, while that's great, uh, we don't even get half our revenue from seed funds. So in theory, like a 2% raise might be covered by that. Um, which, you know, is still good, but uh, don't, I want to caution people, like, it's not free money, right? Like, uh, we're still about $1,500 behind what we should be getting in SEEK uh, if you adjust back for inflation, like back to 2008. Um, so, honestly, like, don't, I hope people understand that that doesn't mean, and I hope politicians don't stand up and say, like, yeah, we did it, uh, because that doesn't equal a 4% increase here and the following year uh, is only slated to have, I believe, a 2% increase that year, that year, which doesn't cover inflation. So, um, anyways, so I, that that's pretty standard. That's like what we would normally do, right? Um, and you'll see at the bottom there, uh, really no change in contingency. I didn't adjust that. There's a slight decrease in percentage because the amount of stays the same with the overall budget group. Uh, personnel expenses uh, grew about 208,000 of 376,000 of that uh, money, and there was a slight decrease in the, uh, the amount of personnel expense. Uh, you know, it's marginal, um, and we're still under that 80% 80, 80 threshold uh, by quite a bit, which is good. Um, now, if you go to your uh, yellow page, this is what I'm presenting is the actual budget, right? Like the, with the assumption, I think I put in my email. Uh, worst case scenario financially is that building opens the day, you know, July 1st, right? The day uh, the fiscal year opens. So, in addition to that other, uh, to the other page, we, there's about $665,000. And a lot of that goes back to that original list of things we had, right? Like we had a principal, a guidance counselor, some food service folks, some custodians, um, you know, a handful of uh, teachers for specials because the other teachers will roll over. Uh, and to that, uh, I think, uh, you know, we've added a, a, a position for a nurse assistant at the elementary school. And I think they're uh, leaning strongly towards probably recommending uh, having one at that building as well. So there's somebody in the building, right? Like, uh, so we don't have issues. So, so those are all included in that number, uh, as well as things like electricity water, uh, you know, risk to the building, that kind of stuff. Now, I will say, like, there are going to be things that happen that, uh, you know, that just kind of pop up, right, that we won't know, and there are going to be some startup expenses, and I don't have uh, a budget for that yet. Those are things that uh, won't recur necessarily annually, but I feel like at this point, that's a, a pretty good assessment of what's going to happen there with the caveat that if we add more positions than what is on that list, then, uh, you know, we may, uh, that, that may increase uh, over time. I think it's doubtful to, to decrease though. So, to make all that work, you can see, if you want to start in the expenses section, uh, you can see an instruction, I've kind of highlighted in red, the things that have to do with the intermediate school that are changes from that blue page. Um, so, at the uh, intermediate staff and instruction, Three teachers, I believe there are uh, two specials and one RTI teacher on that uh, initial list that we had, uh, two admin staff and a copier for the office uh, is on that list as well. Um, student support services, uh, addition of a guidance counselor and a nurse assistant is included in that budget. Um, instructional staff support, the next one down is uh, where the uh, library media specialist slash technology uh, support person, however that looks. Uh, goes uh, you skip, uh, down a few to the school admin support. Uh, school admin is uh, where your principals are located at. Uh, so there's one principal at that building at this stage. Uh, plan operation management, you can see there are two custodians. Uh, utilities in the, uh, oh, that's the other thing I forgot to mention before, the sewage treatment plan. Uh, you know, has a cost to that because we uh, contract with, is it SD1? Uh, to come service that, they have people on this. Uh, a lot, a lot easier, I think, than having our own guys manage that because we still have to have somebody haul off the sludge and things out of it. Um, so, all that being said, that six hundred sixty-five thousand has to come from somewhere, right? Uh, so, uh, the adjust, I got an adjustment there on the very first line uh, to our beginning balance of cash, and that's just kind of like how we ended the year, you know, 
Kind of like you roll over your savings account for one month at next. That's what we're going to start with. Uh, and then the, uh, the bulk of that increase, the 650000 is increased uh, in real estate taxes. So uh, we have that conversation a lot too, right? Like that, that money has to come from real estate taxes either in the form of uh, increased assessments, right? Which happens every year as the property churns. Uh, and, then, and then also new things that are added, and uh, as well as possibly a, a rate increase if we had to look at that. I don't believe that we will. Um, I think uh, as it stands right now, uh, the $7 million would be a realistic number. Uh, we hit that number last year and this year. And what I will say is that, you know, that the starting number, that beginning balance cash, comes from things like contingency, uh, us getting revenue over what uh, was forecast and the expenses that are less than forecasted. So if there's any impact, it really would be that following year, but I don't believe uh, that we'll be in uh, you know, a dire financial uh, position uh, by any means. And, and I think these are uh, realistic numbers, otherwise uh, I will tell you that. Uh, so any questions about what we have there? I apologize, I should have given you a cop another copy of that sheet. It's been emailed a couple of times. It just kind of that list of uh, things that were projected to have for costs for the uh, elementary school. Now, that was developed, I think, two years ago. So certainly the positions have gone up in price uh, incrementally along with the uh, step increases and stuff and the uh, percentage increases that we've had. So like on uh, a couple of them were budgeted for like 55000 I think the teachers, that realistically, it's like a $57,000 number now. But it's all speculation on that they're right two or ten years of experience. So that will kind of shake out when those people actually get hired. And then address their important question. So personnel, you, you feel like this is all that's going to be added personnel? Uh, no, I won't say that because that, that's not a decision that like all, all those haven't been made yet. I don't think I think the first domino to fall is that principal right. and then kind of like that we're going to build a school how, how we want to. I will say that I will be uh, yelling from the background, like if uh, anybody gets any crazy ideas about that, like ten people because it can't happen. Okay. That's, um, that's where I was going. With yeah. That. Okay. So I, at some point, when, when those conversations are had, I'll be involved. And, and, you know, what can we realistically do? Uh, and the answer probably, and people might not want to hear that, is uh, what we've already got outlined, plus maybe a little, right? Like yeah. it's, it's not going to be double the number of staff. Yeah. Uh, in the building that we originally laid out, just because it can't be. And I think the idea was always that, especially when we start the year, if it's later in the year, then we'll kind of we'll kind of start with the core team, and there'll be additional resources from the district and from other places to help as they get started. And then over time, just like all the other schools, you see things added uh, year two, year three. I guess. This is fairly, fairly fluid. Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, we're doing things like. You know, for two grade levels of kids, like it doesn't make sense to have a bookkeeper on staff. Right. Uh, we're trying to get away from charging, you know, uh, fees like for attending school. Right, we used to have a ten dollar fee school. Get rid of that. Um, and so, really, the only thing that they might have, or like if they go to the student right, and they have a field trip, we're going to collect those electronically through the campus. And we already started doing that. Uh, some of the elementary this year, and then. Um, we can either cut those checks from the district office or they can run kind of a, a satellite. We've already checked the, the rules on that, like the elementary school for the 20 checks they're going to have to cut a year, they can just cut from there. That's kind of a, you know, for a satellite location and then have a separate uh, account for that, that school within the elementary school. Uh, try to save some costs. But it just doesn't make sense for, you know, if you're going to have $10,000 in expenses out of the account to pay somebody $35,000, $40,000 in benefits and everything to take care of it. Let me also say that assuming we create a principal's position tonight and are not able to name the principal in February, that person's first task will be to work with central office staff and communicate and design and master schedule. The board will be informed. Uh, if the board ever wants to meet, a special meeting, talk about that. Um, I want to be very open and transparent with what we're doing and why we're doing it. On the one hand, our first priority has to be giving our kids what they need. On the other hand, we we can't overextend ourselves. So, and I think there's a balance there, as there, you know, in all things. But um, 
it's always a busy time of spring with creating positions and approving salary scales and things like that. It will be done with so this spring um, and really until the building opens. But that information will be shared with the board multiple times in multiple ways. And at any time the board wants to meet, look at that, talk about it, we can absolutely do that. Yeah. Obviously, payroll, number one. Expense, I mean, right? like, like, copier is copier, yeah. you know, it is what it yeah. is. Uh, but the, the payroll personnel and then the benefits come with that and managing it is, you know, and then of course there's the cost of upkeep to the building. But. Yeah, it's a little, like, it's a stab at the dark, honestly. Like, it's an educated guess, but it's still a guess. Uh, yeah. We don't know, you know, in, in theory that building should be very efficient right. uh, from an energy standpoint, but until you fire up those units the first city when it's 150 degrees in August, they don't really know yeah. what it's going to be. So, um, you know, there'll be adjustments. It's just like when we open this building, we get really now. You just yeah. kind of see what actuals are and adjust and they, they change as you go. I will say that I, the thing that concerns me more about next year's budget is the fact that we had the kind of the ESSER funding cliff, right? Uh, we have positions that are going to have to either be absorbed into the general fund or they're going to have to go away. And I think I stood up here a couple of years ago when we were getting those and kind of planning and, and approving those positions that when the money ran out, so did the positions. Now, that's not to say that we won't have jobs for, uh, you know, we're going to have jobs at the intermediate school, right, that people can do. Um, but I do think uh, we're going to have to be mindful uh, from a fiscal sense on, you know, it can't be like an emotional thing, like, oh, we really need this, or kids right. love so-and-so. Um, it's going to have to be, you know, we got the money to fix the problems that were created by COVID. Uh, that happened for about two years. We had two years to spend those funds. And now, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's going to be time to move on. For some of them, it's not all of them. I feel like some of them probably make a strong case for needing to be added. Uh, but I think some of them probably can you talk to us about what the SR division looks like over there? Yeah, so uh, I think Mr. Hardman deals with the county on, on those, and uh, they've you know, loosely committed. We don't have anything right yet. I don't think that if we want an SR over there, it'll work just like the elementary school where we cover half the cost and they cover the, half, the other half the cost. So they do that, that for every. Not, that's I'm sorry? That's what I was wondering. Is it uh, that is kind of built into our overall services uh, budget that we have for like you know contracted services that that we do. Um, in in rough numbers, that should be about twenty thousand uh, dollars. So it's not a budget killer necessarily. Uh, and there's also some legislation that's been introduced that schools might be eligible to like for every SRO that we have get a twenty. Bit, I'm sorry, not twenty million. Twenty thousand dollar reimbursement from the state uh, for that, so that would work. For most state grants, they just send you the money and tell you to spend it according to the guidelines. It sounded like that one was maybe going to be a reimbursement, so at the end of the year we would re recoup the funds, hopefully. Um, and so that would be a great thing because then we would be able to recoup it for the the two that we're paying half of, and then also some on the the high school one that, that the county provides. And when that comes, we'll work with the sheriff's department and stuff. But I think the, the intent is absolutely to have an SRO uh, stationed at that school. There's an office form. Uh, to keep it safe, right? In terms of the uh, personnel expenses, do we always assume rank two years experience that a general estimate? Yeah, and it kind of over time, uh, you know, it's average, right? It's right in the middle of the scale uh, financially. Uh, sometimes, you know, when I, I about pass out when somebody hires, uh, you know, they got like 30 <laughs> years of experience and it's like, oh, you're killing me. But then we also have a lot of hires that, you know, are brand new teachers right out of the gate with no experience. So it, it kind of works out over time. Over time. I mean, fortunately, we're not big enough that we have, you know, 100 of those every year. So statistically, I can't say, but anecdotally, like, it, it's kind of average. Yeah, it works out. It would be interesting, at least for me, not today for sure, mm -hmm. but to see at some point how we think that might swing. So, like normally I don't worry too much about it, like we're adding one or two positions and you know it kind of is what it is, but now we're adding so many positions, it could be exponential growth. And I obviously don't want that, but just so we have some. In, some I'm sorry about like how, how we do versus the spread? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that might be. And then the other thing we probably don't account for normally would be 
backfill gap. So I can imagine that this new school I bring in, some staff teachers that are going to want to move to the intermediate school and some that won't, when they move, there may be gaps in other buildings that have to be just perpetually backfilled. We probably don't ever think about that, but this, I don't know how many, how many vacuum positions this might create that we also have to fill. So, that's a count. Yeah, you can't really budget for that, but you know, the idea is like, Okay, we budgeted right to 10 years. It, so as a district, it doesn't really matter where that happens at. So if that's an elementary teacher that comes over with 30 years of experience and fills one of those spots, the idea is that whoever takes their spot, right, the, the ultimate new hire, whoever that is, aligns with that right to 10 years of experience. So yeah, that may not happen specifically at that school, but I, I don't, and there's really no need, no reason to get caught up in like which building that happens in. Sure. But overall, uh, that should be the net effect. Okay. Yeah. We don't need Does that make sense? We'll hire someone and we may have to hire someone. We may have to double yeah. up positions for some I, I would say that. Okay. That happens almost every time we create a position, right? Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of them are like, uh, like that. Like, you know, like we created a, a PE teacher position, we had somebody, an existing person jump, and then the person in the back filled where they came from. That's what we would budget for that. So. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I Unfortunately, know. that. A lot of that doesn't shake out until over the summer, yep. uh, and so it gets it gets kind of tied up at the, at the with the bow at the end when we do the working budget in the fall. Any other questions? different number of classes per day, which has an impact on the many credits they can earn, 
which impacts how many credits they need to graduate. So it's kind of the domino effect there. And this is just getting us on track with that new <coughs> schedule. Right. And at that point, we can do with it whatever we want. 
If we want to continue to use it for that purpose, we can. Okay. If we want to use it for a different purpose or tear it down, we can. But once that is constructed on our property, um, they decide to walk away, it's ours. Into a recess. Yeah. Into <laughs> <laughs> the salt <laughs> dome. <dough>. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a sunset. Yeah. The disco ball. Maybe like the hot pressure. Don't press this button. The hot button. Thank you. 